Hey guys, welcome back to Surface Studio, where we will talk about all things related to filmmaking and visual effects. Now this, you know what this is, this is a Pokeball. I have already shown you in previous tutorials on this channel how you can track the motion of a moving object to attach other visual elements or effects to it. Now the one thing I have not yet shown you is, focus right here, is how you can make the camera follow the motion of that moving object. You can use this technique to create cool looking sniper effects or follow cars around and just zoom in on moving objects in your videos. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do that. For this tutorial, we are going to be using Adobe After Effects, but I will also release a version of this tutorial using HitFilm Express if you're looking for a free program to create this effect with. Now this is going to be an intermediate tutorial and I will assume that you are quite comfortable using Adobe After Effects, but also that you have watched my tutorials on motion tracking and on parenting. If you haven't yet, I'm going to drop you links to those tutorials down below, so be sure to check them out before you come back here. Also, if you enjoy my content, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It makes a huge difference to my channel and I really, really appreciate it. But now, before I talk your face off, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the exciting world of Adobe After Effects. I have a brand new empty project here and I have already imported the two clips that we will be using into this project, one called lakekawaguchiko.mov, one called crosshair.mp4. And as always, if you do want to follow along, you will be able to download these clips from our website. So simply go to surfacedstudio.com forward slash downloads and you will be able to grab these files to follow along. Now first, let's grab this lakekawaguchiko.mov Drop it onto the new composition icon to create a new composition. Let me zoom all the way back out. And this is a clip taken with my DJI Mavic Pro over Lake Kawaguchiko, which is actually in Japan. It's at the foot of Mount Fuji. And if it wasn't a cloudy day, like it seems to be pretty much most of the year, you would be able to actually see Mount Fuji up in here. So just imagine a big, beautiful mountain right there. But I thought that this shot was quite nice because there's a bit of movement in the camera itself, like the drone is strafing towards the left. But there's also a few elements in here that we can track really nicely. For example, this white little car. So the effect we are going to create is that at about a second and a half, we're going to zoom in onto this car here and then follow its movement. So we want the camera to track its movement and kind of follow it along until it vanishes behind those trees on that side. And then the camera is going to zoom back out and reveal the rest of the scenery until the end of the shot. So for that, the first thing we need to do is we need to track the movement of this car. And I have covered that in a separate tutorial on motion tracking already. So I'm going to go a little bit quick. If you can't follow along, check out my motion tracking tutorial. I'm going to drop you the link to that down in the video description. So let's go to the point where we want the camera to start following the car, which for me is at one second and 12 frames in. Let's just zoom in a little bit and let's start motion tracking this car. So let's bring up the tracker from window tracker. There it is. Make sure the layer is selected. Let's select to track motion. And with this track point, let's make sure we can place it right on the car. Let's zoom in. I'm going to place this tracker on the front edge of the window because that should be nice and clear. Going to make the tracking area a bit larger and wider. Also going to make the search area fairly flat and a bit wider because the car is mainly moving towards the left. So let's zoom out a little bit. Let's simply start tracking this forward. Cool, that is holding on really nicely. Whoa, there we lost the tracker. Let's stop and zoom in. Let's go back a couple of frames and just fix this tracker up where it goes off track. So that one, yep, I think that one is starting to look a little bit funny. So I'm just going to manually go through these frames with page up and page down and place the tracker exactly where it should really be. Cool, that should be enough. Let's zoom back out and continue tracking forward. Cool, and I think that should actually be enough. Let's check this out. And the track point does follow the movement really, really nicely. So let's whip up a null object so we can store this tracking data. So right click into our layer window, new null object. I'm going to call this one tracking null. Then with the Lake Kawaguchiko layer selected, come back into the tracker panel. Let's go edit target, make sure we're aiming it at our tracking null object, hit OK. Let's hit apply. And yes, we want to apply the X and Y tracking data that we've generated here onto the position of the null object. Hit OK. And now we should have our null object, this tracking null object here. Follow the movement of the car nicely. And if you press U to reveal the keyframes, that is starting at 1 second and 12 frames in and finishes at just around 8 seconds when the car vanishes behind the trees. 
Cool, so now we've tracked the motion of this car and we could easily attach visual elements or effects to it simply by parenting them to this tracking null object. But we want the camera and the focus to follow this object rather than attaching anything to it. For that, we actually need to create a camera. So let's right click into the layer window, select new and camera. And in here, it is really important that the type of camera is not a two node camera. A two node camera has a center and a point of view or point of interest. And that gets a bit difficult to manage. Change this type over to be a one node camera. Let's just call it camera as well. Hit OK. And what we can now do, we can now parent this camera to the null object. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come to the beginning of my tracking data to one frame in 12 seconds, the first keyframe on this tracking data here. Let's select the camera, grab the pick whip icon here from the right hand side and let's select the tracking null object. Let's let go. And if you now scrub forward, nothing at all happens. And that is because when you created the camera, you may have seen a warning telling you it will only affect 3D layers and lights. And well, I didn't get the warning, but I can see that my Lake Kawaguchiko layer is not a 3D layer. If you don't see these switches, F4 to toggle them on or off. So let's enable the 3D layer switch for Lake Kawaguchiko. And now if I scrub forward, what I can see here, you can see the null object seemingly drifting off this car, but the car now stays at exactly the same spot in the shot. So now you have the camera actually following along with this car. If you zoom out, you can see that this Lake Kawaguchi layer now moves to keep the car in the same location. If you press Alt and single quote or option and single quote on the Mac to reveal this grid, you will be able to see that this car stays at the exact same spot in the shot. So now we have the camera following the movement of the car. The only issue is now that you can see the edge here. You can see below the layer because, well, you're moving the layer. So you can see a bit on the outside. For that, we'll kind of need to zoom in. So let's come to the very beginning of our tracking where the camera starts following this car. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select the camera layer, press P to reveal the position, place a keyframe on that. Let's go forward to about two seconds in and you can start seeing the edge of this layer right there. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the unified camera tool, which you can find on the toolbar here. So unified camera tool, orbit tool or the tracking XY camera tool. Let's select the track XY camera tool. You can also just press C to kind of cycle through these. And well, let's actually start off with the zoom tool. So with the zoom tool, simply click and drag upwards to zoom in on this layer. I'm going to zoom in a fair bit. Let's press C a couple more times to get back into the tracking tool. Let's drag this car, which is down there, right into the center of the composition because kind of this is where I want the camera to end up. And if I come back out, what will happen is that the camera, now just as it starts to follow this car, starts shooting in, it will then follow this car along. And what I'm going to do is just as that car hits the bushes, I'm going to zoom the camera right back out. So let's come to maybe right about there. Let's place a keyframe, go about 12 frames forward. Let's press Alt and forward slash option forward slash to see the whole composition. Let's return back to the zoom tool, zoom right back out. Let's press C a few times to get the tracking tool. I kind of want to get the layer right back in there and I can see it's still a fair bit too big. So let's kind of center that and let's zoom out a little bit more so we can kind of get to see as much of this scenic wide shot as we can. And again, let's just place that a little bit better in it. So now I have the camera zoom right back out at the end. Let's just zoom out of our timeline a little bit, select all of the keyframes for the camera position, press F9 to enable Bezier interpolation, just so that the animation is a bit nicer and smoother. Alt and forward slash or option and forward slash on a Mac to zoom all the way back out and Alt or option and single quote to hide that grid again. I'm also going to disable the visibility on this null object because we don't actually need to see it. So let's rewind and let's play back our clip and see what we have so far. Cool, and that's actually looking really nice. Camera zooms in follows the object that we want to follow, and then it zooms back out. 
Now you can add sniper scopes or highlights or tracking all sorts of other things here. I've created this little crosshair.mp4 clip and I'm just going to drag that in and place it in on my composition right at the top. And that's kind of just this little animated crosshair here. And I'm just going to blend that over the car just as the camera zooms in. So let's go to the beginning here. Let's reveal the blend modes with F4. Let's just change this to additive. So that's just going to form around the car right here. Maybe I'll scale it up just a little bit as well. So just as the camera zooms in, it'll form this little crosshair right there around the car. And I'm just going to fade it out at the end here. So let's just reveal the opacity with T. Set a keyframe to zero, come back a little bit, set the opacity back to 100. So it's just going to fade out. Maybe I'll fade it out just before the camera zooms back out. Let's just enable Bezier interpolation of that as well. It just adds a little bit of style to it. But again, obviously you can do whatever you want with this technique. Just, you know, just create some cool clips and share them. I'm really keen to see what you guys create. So let's collapse all of our layers. And I'm also noticing that the zooming in and out will probably look a little bit nicer with motion blur enabled. So let's reveal the layer switches again, enable motion blur on this Lake Kawaguchi Ko layer and make sure you can also enable motion blur on your composition and Whoa, that is a lot of motion blur. Let's just right click into our layer window, come to composition settings, go into advanced and uh, shutter angle 180. Maybe I'll set this to 90, just so that I don't get quite as much motion blur because I felt it was a little bit too much. Let's come back to the beginning. Let me make this just a little bit bigger and let's play back our final camera zoom effect. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me, what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.